think of one thing that everyone has in common, one thing that can instantly change your mood, one thing that you can simultaneously feel and hear, the answer is of course music. All cultures have music. We are born into music by hearing our mothers sing lullabies to us, and we use music in every aspect of our lives. But what is so special about music, you might ask? Why does it have such a power over our minds, our emotions, and even our memories? Music is created and expressed in the form of vibrations. It is taken in by our auditory organs, but even if you are deaf, even if you are hard of hearing and you, you can't hear, you can still enjoy music through the vibration and the rhythm. It can be felt. It is one of the gifts given to us by the universe. Have you ever wondered why music has such a profound effect on us? Even more interestingly, you might ask, why do music entertainers and musicians get paid so much? Why do they get put on such a pedestal in society, especially in the Western world? So many questions out there. We could tackle it from a human psychology point of view. Actually, there's an entire field called musical psychology. So trust me, even if I got into it, I'd only be skimming the top. But let me try to shed some light on this, but that's all it's going to be. It's going to be me skimming the top of this fascinating and complex idea. I want to point out the power of music to heal the earth in a profound way. I will show you in this video how this can be done. Quote by Nikola Tesla, if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Okay, let me start on a lighter foot here. I'm going to tell you about the film franchise Bill and Ted, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Have you seen these films? In total, there are three. They came out many years ago. The final one is called Face the Music, and it's even on Netflix right now. It has the most profound ideas about the importance of music in it. Albeit, it is buried in a whole bunch of like ridiculousness, okay? So let me walk you through each one of these films very briefly, just to show you. Okay, so in part one, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, Bill and Ted are high school buddies starting a band. However, they are about to fail their history class, which means Ted would be sent to military school. They receive help from Rufus, which is played by George Carlin, a traveler from the future where their band is the foundation for a perfect society, ironically. With the use of Rufus's time machine, Bill and Ted travel to various points in history, returning with important figures to help them complete their final history presentation. Part two of the franchise is called Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. This one is a little bit more ridiculous. Usually a sequel is, but in this one, um, they get roped into, like the two friends get roped into a fantastic adventure when somebody by the name of De Nomalous is a villain from the future. He sends evil robot duplicates of the two guys to terminate and replace them. The robot doubles actually succeed in killing Bill and Ted, but the two are determined to escape the afterlife, challenging the Grim Reaper to a series of games in order to return to the land of the living. Okay, so in this one, we lost them in this theme of the music a little bit, but it ties in at the end. So let me explain number three real quick. This one's called Face the Music. In this one, the ruler of the future tells best friends Bill and Ted that they must compose a new song to save life as we know it. But instead of writing it, they decide to travel through time to steal it from their older selves. It's kind of ridiculous, I know. Meanwhile, their young daughters devise their own musical scheme to help their fathers bring harmony to the universe. So I'm not going to spoil the entire ending, and I know you're all going to run to Netflix right now to go watch it, right after you hit subscribe here, of course. But, but just hang in there. Okay, the point is that they have a very relevant idea here. If there is anything that can unite the world peacefully, it will have to be something that involves a common frequency or vibration. So music, music is the way to do this. It can do it in several ways. Okay, so first of all, it can create something called a Schumann frequency or other frequencies that create a feeling of calm in the masses of people that are listening to it. Secondly, music can contain subliminal messages. So this can be a powerful way to reprogram a person or even yourself with beliefs that are helpful to you and to the earth, of course. Okay, so thirdly, music can create a sense of connectedness and camaraderie. So when everybody's on the same wavelength, this is a, a great benefit. It can cause neural connections that cause people to create new feelings of peace between groups, which is necessary. Okay, so here's a question. Again, why do musical artists make so much money? 
And the truth is, the answer is simple. They provide a value to the world in the form of timeless entertainment. The long answer, though, is that they are reaching the masses and they have a medium to do so. They have the ability and the material to spread such positivity, hope, love, peace, everything to potentially the entire world. So I said earlier, music can heal the world. So how can music heal the world? We know the brain operates under various levels of consciousness. There is normal alert waking state called the beta state. Then we can calm down a little bit to meditate or sleep. And at that point we enter what's called the alpha state. This is a slower, calmer, and more organized brainwave. While in the beta state, if something happens to stimulate us, we can easily enter what is called the high beta state. This is the state you are in when you are like running for your life, or you're in an argument or a fight, you're in a competition, or maybe you just had a major scare, you're in a near-death experience, and other experiences can lead us into a high beta state as well. It's like a fight or flight survival. Going a little deeper, I can point out that there is an actual measurable frequency associated with each brain wave or each brain state. In beta, your brain is operating at 12 to 27 hertz. In alpha, you're at 8 to 12 hertz. In theta, or sleeping in a deep meditative trance, you're between 3 and 8 hertz. In delta, this is the deep sleep and you're at 0.2 to 3 hertz. In gamma, this is the fastest brainwave frequency. It ranges from 27 to 100 hertz. You are in gamma when you are deeply emerged in problem solving or when you're the most awake. Okay, so they call this hyperconscious or superconscious. Aside from the brain waves that carry a frequency, the seven energy centers or chakras in the body each are associated with a frequency as well. Ancient Hindu beliefs say the secret to our happiness and well being lies within these seven major energy centers in our body. When they are all vibrating correctly, all the energy in our body is in balance and we will enjoy good physical, mental, and spiritual health. The root chakra is at 3,107 hertz. The sacral chakra is at 3,367 hertz. The solar plexus is at 2020 hertz. Hmm, 2020. The heart chakra is at 2,178 hertz. Next is the throat chakra, which is at 2,260 hertz. And then there is the third eye chakra, which we find at 3,540 hertz. And lastly, the crown chakra at 2,753 hertz. According to medium.com, there are a series of healing frequencies as well. These are called sophageo frequencies. Here they are. First of all, there's 174 hertz, which relieves pain and stress. 285 hertz, heals tissues and organs. 396 hertz, liberates you from fear and guilt. 417 hertz facilitates change, 528 hertz for transformation and DNA repair. That's a big one. 639 hertz connects you with your relationships. 741 hertz keeps, helps provide solutions and self-expression. Okay, there have been many, many studies done using these frequencies and I'm going to put some references to some below. To initiate and encourage each condition or to encourage healing, one can immerse oneself in the frequency of your choosing for short periods or even extended periods of time. The easiest way to do this, well, is to listen to music. So you can find a song that has the appropriate frequency. I also have a graphic that I found that shows you how each Frequency is related to brain waves and then to different physical sensations and physical conditions. So I'll also put a link to that below. Now, the most famous song that uses a sophageal frequency of 528 hertz is John Lennon's Imagine. It's amazing that he wrote this song to bring about world peace. He tried to do just that. Just like in Bill and Ted, he tried to create a song that could unite the world. If anyone could do it, it would be John Lennon. Again, there's a link to his video below. Many religions use sound and music too in their frequencies. Concept of Om appears in the Vedas and it is used in meditation. Certain vibrations created by chanting and prayer connects the humans to gods themselves. One final idea that I wanted to point out is something that's not commonly related with music. It's the idea of a mandala. Mandalas are related to sound and vibration. Each one represents a mnemonic device used to aid in meditation. So the official mandalas that are used in actual meditation are related to an actual frequency. It is used often in tandem with chanting. So in Hindu temples, we have a visual representation of the prayer in the form of a mandala. These mandala patterns actually represent a particular frequency, a frequency related to the sound that it is referring to. 
it is found that different frequencies of sound create different patterns. The higher frequencies have more complex patterns. So there have been tons and tons of experiments done using a machine that creates a specific frequency that causes a metal plate on top to vibrate. These vibrations create specific shapes when a certain type of material is placed on top of the plate, like salt or sand. I've put a few examples, okay, of images here. Now when the experiment was done with the ohm frequency, the shape created was a circle with a dot in the middle. So it was like a mandala, but it was just a perfect circle with a dot in the middle. Music and sound is really, really a huge deal. And what I want to do is create a couple more videos just about this topic. So in the near future, I would like to talk about the fact that ancient civilizations used sound and sound waves in order to levitate large items and large objects. Perhaps that's how the pyramids were actually created. Um, I also want to talk about some other really neat ideas with regard to sound um, and the psychological aspects associated with it. So please stay tuned for that. I want to finish off by telling you what you can do with this information. We can use all this knowledge that we're talking about with regard to frequency and music to find greater levels of happiness, love and prosperity in your life. So here are five ways that you can use sound and music to be happier and to manifest more powerfully. Number one, you can use an upbeat tune or song that will better your mood. It doesn't take much, any song that makes you want to dance or get up and move. Number two, have a song that you listen to while you're scripting, meditating or visualizing. Choose something motivating and positive. Number three, listen to a certain frequency while using the 17 second rule. It will help you to focus more intensely. Number four, use music to help you to transmute emotions gradually. Number five, use binaural beats and healing frequencies in order to help you sleep. These are all ways that you can use music to better your life and feel happier. Okay, I'd love for you to leave a comment below. Let me know, what is your favorite song? What is your favorite frequency to listen to? Did you know all of this stuff already? Is there something else you'd like to know that you'd like me to do your research for you? I would love, love, love to follow up with this material. I feel very connected to frequencies and music. Um, I find that I can very quickly change from one um, kind of, you know, mental state to another just by listening to a certain song. And a lot of my memories are very closely related to whatever song was playing in the background, okay? So maybe your life doesn't have a, um, a soundtrack, but maybe it can, okay? Make sure that it's all happy songs, right? Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please leave a comment. I love you all. Love and light. Have a great day and A, be positive. Mwah. Mike, please try not to make noise for two seconds.